morning. So it's Friday, it's cold, um, and I thought I'd give you a quick update on some changes because Alan Coleman, who is also building an electric RX-8, and he's doing it in slightly different ways, but obviously he's got a lot of the templates and stuff and code that I've got, but he's got lots of great ideas as well. And it's kind of spurred me on again after months of driving the car as it is, going, do you know what, there are improvements that can be made. So he's got great ideas about beefing up the, you know, the HV relays that I have, my, my little timer that I use that, to be quite honest, has, has been good, but has also caused me a few issues as well. I've got no real control over it. So we're going to put control mechanism in, which is fantastic. That's going to really beef that area up. Um, I've been sent information about the Nissan Leaf water pumps as well. So thanks for that um, on controlling the speed because my water system and my cooling system at the moment, the pump is just so loud. Well, not so loud, it's loud. Um, so I can just trim that down 50%, it will be silent. So that's great. But the biggest thing I've been working on is how to get this to regen. You know, like you do in the, in the Nissan Leaf, you do a one pedal, take your foot off, and it regens, and it comes to a stop. So, um, Dala, who I know a lot of you are going to know, who's got his great YouTube channel, has done a huge amount of work decoding and, and upgrading Nissan Leafs, um, uploaded some uh, E-plus driving logs from somebody who had an E-plus, which this is a, a Nissan Leaf E-plus now. Um, so I went through the logs drew traces of the torque requests and the speed and everything that was going on in the car and to try and find out when regen happens and what causes it. Now, it seems very simple after all that, <laughs> all that looking and, and diagnosing that actually all that appears to happen is it puts the motor in reverse, which kind of sounds obvious, but not obvious as well. I don't really understand how that works because going in reverse, you're using power, aren't you, to go in reverse, but it must trigger something else in the inverter, something that I don't understand, whereby you're going in reverse, but you're going forward, so you're gonna regen. Um, I did some very basic tests on the ramp here, and uh, I was getting regen. Obviously on the ramp, there's no real inertia, so it's a very fractional bit of regen, but I saw current going the other way. So I programmed it, that when I take my foot off the throttle, it goes into regen at about 150 RPM, it stops. Now I've done that because when it gets to zero, you actually start going backwards because obviously you're making <laughs> backwards torque requests, um, which luckily I had it on the ramp and I didn't drive straight out of the garage. So I've tested, all is good. Um, I'm gonna go out for a test drive now, and see if it works. So I don't know how well this is gonna work out. This is my iPhone I'm taking this on. I probably should get better video equipment now. Um, but anyway, this is me in the car, just reversed out the drive, all good. I've got my little normal camera that I use to do my video pointing at this, which is my display that I can alter. At the moment, it's gonna display uh, amps. So if I just blip the throttle, it goes up and it goes down. So that should display amps and it also displays negative amps. So when the car is on charge, I can see it's on charge because that, that registers a current. So it does both ways. So what I should see is when I accelerate, I should see current being drawn, quite high current. And then on regen, I'm expecting much lower currents to be seen. I'm gonna have the, the camera on it so that um, I don't have to keep looking down at it when I'm driving. Um, fingers crossed, it, it works. But uh, well, only one way of finding out. Let's give it a go. So first test, absolutely brilliant. Just driven around the block and it regens. Um, of course, I live on a hill. So rolling down a hill is a great way of testing the regen because it just regens whilst you're rolling along going down the hill. The settings I've got it on are very mild by accident. Uh, I don't know what very strong will be. I know the torque requests I'm making in reverse are about, I don't know, 25, 30% of the max torque requests. So, you know, obviously I can up that considerably and I guess you get a lot more hard regen. But what I like about what I've got here is that it is so mild, you do still need to use the brake really to stop, um, unless of course you wanna coast for ages. And it makes me think, well, do I then need to attach it to the brake pedal so much? Because I'm not really coming to a, a, a really sharp stop. Not like my missus who's got the actual Nissan Leaf, uh, the second gen. Um, in that, you know, it, it comes pretty rapidly to a stop. In this, actually, it's a bit more gentle. But I am generating, you know, teens of amps. So the battery just ran out on my other camera, which is a bit annoying. So I've just driven home. I'm going to get my other battery um, battery like for the camera. I'm going to set it back up again, try and make sure I get some decent footage of the amps. Not that exciting, but it shows it working. And, uh, and then I'll put some video together. Cheers.
Well, okay, that's just brilliant. So I've been for a longer drive and it works fine. Um, so it's very light, as I said. I've got some video footage now of the of the amps. That's good. Um, I'm going to now play. I think I'm going to increase the regen, see what happens. Um, kind of like it as it is, to be honest. It's not too vicious. You're getting regen. You still have to use the brake a little bit. So you're getting your brake light on. I don't have to then interface with the brake system. But part of me says it'd be nice to get all regen. But then... I'm messing with the brakes and don't want to start doing that. I don't know. But I'm going to have a bit more play and um, I'll let you know next time. Thanks.